Welcome back to Beyond the Scale, guys. Thank you for uh, supporting the channel. Anybody new to the channel? And the pits is basically just myself working on a vehicle, uh, you know, either fixing something, modifying something, doing something to that effect. And uh, here we have the Wheelie King based mud truck. This originally was the Brutus monster truck you see in some of the older films I have. And at some point when I got Max D, I decided to convert this over to a mud truck, thinking I could do some mud bogging, and this would be kind of the channel truck as far as sponsor, with doing the BTS and logos, stuff like that. See some decals I made. But, um... Here in the backyard, it's real sandy, so I never could really make a good mud bog. And then, I was like, well, the winter, I'll hit some snow, do some, you know, course with that. But still no snow has really dropped this year enough to make it efficient enough. So, um, that last video of this you've seen running, you've seen the body get ripped off because it's real cold out. And this body was held on by Velcro right here and it just ripped off ripped the paint off the hood some on the bed bed's not as bad because it's just black but this kind of sucks so I think since I have not been able to really use it as the mud truck I am going to convert this back to a monster truck just basically the tires that's it maybe do some rear steering in the future because this used to have rear steering but I put it, the lockout back on um, so, I think I'm going to take these, uh, Mickey Thompsons off, put those on the shelf for now, grab those, uh, Monster Truck Mud Thrasher tires, put those back on. I'm going to fix this body, basically I think the plan is to spray paint maybe the hood black, and then you could, you know, just touch that up with black, and clean it up a bit, and use this body still, and then... Uh, I robbed the steering horn right here for Max D, so I'll probably get that back. And then I still have the parts that I took off back here. So I'm going to try to secure the battery back here more. Because it's, I think I took the back off due to the uh, wiring on the battery I was using. It just wouldn't close properly, so I think that's why I took it off. So I'm going to address that. Um, and kind of work on maybe putting that wheelie bar back on. And then I think I'm going to take off the Velcro and go back to the pin style uh, body holder mount. Just to less headache overall. Um, just less to deal with. Easier just to pop on now and not have to worry about the Velcro issue again. So I'll probably drill holes for that as well when I go to mount this again. But and then possibly swap this 27 turn axial motor out because that's going to be pretty slow uh, so I'm going to have to address that but other than that uh, probably keep maybe the dual shocks you know set up just for the look and kind of go from there I guess so let's start we'll uh I'll take the tires off camera it's just your traditional nut Take those off, set those aside, and kind of start working on getting this body squared away, get these other parts I mentioned squared away, and then uh, hopefully get this thing back on the track hitting some ramps. And just like that, we're on the bench over here. We have the tires removed. These particular rims have an offset that came with them, and that just goes straight on the shaft, and that little pen slides in there. So, with those removed, that means I had to dig out the original plastic hexes that came with it. Those will be slid on, just like that, so we can fit the Mud Thrasher tires back on. These come with the stock Wheelie King. Obviously, I painted those, shaved down the tires myself. If you're interested in seeing how I went about it, I'll leave the description, or leave the link in the description below for you. Other than that, you already know the Velcro ripped off there. We're going to get rid of that. Um, found the piece that holds the battery 
in place that goes back here and we're just going to have to test fit the actual battery make sure the connections go where they should and then this is like the wheelie bar that comes with it bolts on right there looks like it'll fit pretty nice back there so I think I'm going to put that back on and use that um, I believe this used to have a roller on the back but I chopped it off so had to figure something out with that and then I had some you know just plastic headers laying around that I wanted to use on other builds but never worked out size wise and stuff so I might try to fit those on there somehow see if we can mount them up if not no big deal you guys already know the body I'm probably just going to shoot some black on the inside for that fix but up here I'm just going to tape it off shoot it with black and then cover it with like a matte clear um, finish and then maybe throw a decal up there or something that'll probably be the step one of this right now and then also the body post I think I glued these to those so we might have to search for some new body post to put in there I uh, dug out the steering this is the original front steering I was set up I might at some point down the road put this back on and then shift this metal one back here again so we can have rear steering and then if you guys ever upgrade parts do anything like that always a good idea to keep the stock ones and don't throw them away label them so then you can go back and dig out stuff you might need so I got sway bar in there longer drive shafts I think those I bought um, when I had the conversion kit to the crawler but now I'm back to the short style uh, drive shafts and, you know just miscellaneous parts that come off there so these shocks I'm going to leave as is black I do have a set of the orange reddish HPI ones that come stock too I was going to paint them a uh, orange to match but I think for now I'm just going to leave the black ones and maybe down the road we'll swap that out and then this motor I kind of want to do at least a 550 or something because this thing is going to be really slow it's just a axial 27 turn I threw in there and then I had sponsor plastic plates here I don't know where I put them I don't think I threw them away so I'm going to try to find those and put those back on but uh, other than that, let's uh, go ahead and prep this body and uh, get some paint ready. Alright, got the body prepared here. Well, not prepared, but about to be. Do this how you want. You can wash it first with some warm soapy water. And then wipe it with a degreaser. Just tape it. Whatever you want to do. In here, I'm not really going to do anything. I'm just going to throw some black in there I'm not too concerned about that part but out here I'm going to go ahead and just rub it down with some rubbing alcohol paper towel let it dry mask it with some tape so with the masking on this truck hood I'm going to just use this body line and then for the grill part I'm just going to go probably up to the grill nothing fancy here it's going to be a basher body so
Another trick you could do is lay this out flat in something and just take your straight edge and cut little thin pieces so you got a little bit easier control on you know the curves and stuff just depending on how much you want to put into getting it perfect uh, like I said this is a basher body for me so I'm just going with the you know inch tape or whatever and just doing it best I can nothing's too fancy uh, when I'm going to paint I'll press down these edges again to make sure they're good but from here I will get some well typically I'd get paper newspaper or something and tape off the edges here for overspray um, probably just do a little bit and just cover what I need to because it's not going to be too crazy on that just enough to make sure the clear coat spray doesn't get too crazy because that's where that'll come into play and then this I'm not too concerned about I'm just gonna throw some black on it so gonna get some paper finish that masking and then I will come back show you what I'm using for the paint and we will paint this up get this thing drying and out the way are they taped up prepared you can kind of see what I did here I just Laid the tape halfway on the paper and then stuck it down. Tucked the bottom in here so it's all nice and clean. Shouldn't have any issues. Like I said, when I throw down the paint, I will run my finger across all the tape edges so there's minimal chance of bleeding through and all of that. So, if it was warmer out, I'd probably just throw some of this on there and call it a day because it'd be a lot quicker and easier. But it's cold, so I'm going to airbrush this one, the black, and then I'm just going to throw some of this matte clear coat on top. So it's a little bit protective. It's going to probably scratch off easy because it's on the outside. But it is what it is. So for paint, I'll be using the OPEC Createx Black. This is a new bottle. I had to throw a mixture together here. Ran out, so... Had to make some up, but I also had my old bottle that was empty, so I went ahead and threw the Windex in there. If you guys watch that one video, video, um, you've seen that hack trick I do. I just, instead of buying a reducer or whatever, throw some Windex in there, mix it up, whatever ratio you need to make it thin enough. And that's what I did here with the empty bottle. Let's see the spray now here. Do it with the empty bottle so you can get the most out of the paint that's left before you toss the bottle so I'll be using that and again Windex is just a hack type thing you don't have to do that um, I'm not a professional airbrusher so this is just the method I use because it's cheap and easy now if I get into something where it's going to be a body that's going to be on show or what have you then I'll probably buy some legit stuff but for now just around the house stuff I'm using Windex mixing it to cut that down to thin it out and if you guys want to know you're thinning it out just so it goes smoother through your um, your airbrush gun so it's not actually clogging it or coming out too thick and not spraying so that's the only reason so I'm gonna go ahead turn on the air compressor get that laid down probably don't know how many coats I'll do I just judge it as I go and hit those two spots and then I will take this outside spray it with a clear coat a few times let that dry and then maybe come back with a decal at some point to show you guys or maybe right after this paint dries Make sure you guys test the spray before you throw some down. First coat is just going to be light just to get some on there. Now if you guys want to take some like scotch bright or something, scotch pad, something like this. Maybe rub it on there. Maybe get a little bit of a... 
scuffiness to it. Help it, the paint you here. That's on you if you want. Don't know if it'll work a lot or help at all. Should. Typically it does on most things you paint, but being this more glossy finish, I don't know how you know, tough it is to penetrate with just that, but could always do that method too. Remember guys, you guys want to hit it from every angle so you get everything covered. Because sometimes you're not looking at certain angles on the vehicle, truck body. You want to make sure you are moving around so you can't get those uh, spots you might not think about hitting. And uh, yeah, that's why I keep moving the body around. You can see this will eventually darken up. But just to help it out, I'm going to shoot some black underneath right here to kind of give that a better coverage make it a little bit quicker and easier to get this done now if you're going to do this be aware of uh, your windshield underneath here just so you don't over spray into that not a huge deal with airbrush because this is a uh, water based so we can wipe it off pretty easy Well, you guys get the gist of the deal. You can see the back bed. A couple more layers that should be fully covered and done. Looks pretty good already. Hood's just about there. I'm going to throw some more on just to make sure it's covered. Keep that going. I'll do a couple more layers on the bottom to help cover that up too. And then, um, like I said, get that as black as I want. And then... I will throw that clear mat down outside in a ventilated area and then probably do three or four coats just depending and again this is going to be beat up scratch it'll probably show through eventually it's not a big deal for me but take your time pretty much quality is what you want to make of it so if you want it to last go about a different way this is just strictly quick paint job for a bashing body to make it look decent for the time being so um follow this if you want this is just what i'm doing and that's the great thing about rc you can uh you know just go about it in many different ways you want and accomplish what your end goal is and mine is to bash this truck body and destroy it probably so gonna wrap this stuff up i'll probably show you guys just the body at the end of the video on the truck um probably should have drilled the holes out first maybe i'll do that after i throw the airbrushing down and then uh make sure the body posts fit get those squared away and if you are doing this with me do those body holes before you paint it's going to be a lot easier this is going to possibly create chipping and stuff for the paint so hopefully not but it is what it is so gonna wrap this up and then we'll start working on the chassis part of it all right so the body is finished i just need to possibly make a decal if i'm looking to do that for the hood otherwise got the holes drilled for the body post that came out fine cleaned up the edges on the inside of the flash that comes after drilling it i did work on getting these posts freed from the little custom pieces i made for the velcro so before these just sat on there. And what I did was I took about four, looks like four or five pieces of styrene, stacked them together, clamped and glued them. And then I put a strip of Velcro up top, drilled out the holes so they could receive the body post and glued it on with like some quick grip, all purpose adhesive. So the first one I ended up 
heating up with a heat gun and just kind of worked it out and it came out and then the second one I just tried without doing anything and it, it did come out just takes a little bit of elbow grease and it does work so those two are now free so just need a little bit of cleanup of the adhesive uh, now so let's look into putting these little hexes on get those squared away so the pins will stay in and um, after that maybe tackle this back area with the battery holder and everything so for the most part this is just in the pits guys so it's not really a how-to video or anything it's just more of a behind the scenes look of what I have going on and that's pretty much it give tips here and there but it's not specifically designed for that for this portion of the channel just gonna do this side and then I'll do the other side off camera because you guys get it I'm just putting these uh, hexes in lining up with the pins now these are plastic so they probably will more likely get stuck inside the uh, wheel itself I'm pretty sure they did before so not a huge deal but these do fit pretty snug and these are a little bit thicker so it's kind of nice and since they are plastic on plastic hopefully less likely for uh, it to strip it out have all those issues and these tires aren't heavy or anything there's no foam so it's no real big deal So this back battery tray kind of holder just slips in the, the grooves right there. And you just got this plastic dowel pin that slides through it all to retain it. Pretty simple. And then up top, right here you have a little clip. Kind of clips in and then you can put a body pin right through there. And that will secure the battery itself. I think before I took it apart because the wires weren't fitting properly to come through. It wouldn't uh, close, so it was kind of pointless to keep it on there at the time. But battery does fall off easily without it. So either going to do this method or we'll have to kind of custom make a setup. So that way we can pull the battery in there. Then this looks like it clamped like this before. Take out those screws. So I'm just going to get a Phillips screwdriver, back these out, and then reinsert this in. And then this portion, you can see, if it focuses, there we go, that has a little indentation. That's what holds the dowel pin in place. So when it's screwed in. That does the job for pulling that in and the uh, other portions of the battery tray. So let me grab a uh, Phillips and I'll be right back. Now this wheelie bar stock has a piece that comes out back here more. It actually is, uh, has a little roller on it as well. But at some point I chopped that off. I'm not sure why or for what. But this extends out to some degree with a little roller on there. But not a big deal here. So might just clean up these edges because they're kind of, they got a little bit of uh sharpness to them here. I'm going to throw the tires on real quick here. So this is pretty much done as far as what needs to be changed over. I need to grab a steering horn from Max D since that's where that went to. The motor for right now I'm just going to leave that axial 27 turn just because that's kind of what I got laying around and then look for those little sponsor plates see if I still have those laying around 
and then throw on the body and that's pretty much it for this section of the you know rebuilding of the monster truck part of HI HPI Willy King um, now I'm gonna run it see how bad the motor is as far as slowness and then we'll uh, kind of work from there on figuring out a motor to swap in it it's pretty much all the motors I have laying around are just your generic 27 turns I'm pretty sure this one's the one that came out of it originally. I do have this one that is really fast, but all the ESCs I have just get too hot. They cannot handle this motor. So in order to run this one, I need something more heavy duty, I think. Um, but yeah, great motor. Just That came out of a modified Cloudbuster I had. It ran two of these. Um, but that was a vehicle I got rid of a long time ago, so had this laying around from it. The other one melted when I was uh, when I owned it, so I ran it too hot. So that's that. But I'm gonna throw on the other tire and then probably just go ahead and get the body on, so you guys can see the kind of finished result on that. No decal or anything. Just show you what it looks like with the paint done and all that. So. Let's uh, wrap this video up. Alright guys, so kind of what it looks like here at the end of the day. I do need to drill these holes a little bit bigger just to fit in there. I think some of that glue resin might have uh, made it a little thicker. But you can see kind of what I did there. But you can see also the other paint damage that has occurred. But, but overall, looks better than it did. And that's all that matters. So there's that, and a little shot of the. I thought the wheelie bar portion would stick out a little bit more, but it doesn't. So we'll maybe have to address that at some point. Um, but yeah, that's uh, a little bit behind the scenes here, just prepping this truck. Hopefully, we can uh, get some snow that's sticky enough to make some ramps out of, do some freestyle. Um, see how this motor does thought about cutting out these windows at some point but for right now I'm just gonna leave them and um, yeah I don't know about decals or anything else on the side but it'll be good for now get it out there run it and see how the Willy King holds up so thanks for watching please subscribe hit that uh, notification bell next to the subscribe button so you guys don't miss any videos I'm trying to get some out for you guys as much as I can um, it is cold out, as most of you know, so, you know, videos are tough to do outside at some point because you want to run RCs, but it's also a chance they're going to break if they have a lot of plastic on them. As you've seen with that Max D video, the steering was snapped completely in half, so it is what it is, though. Just got to fix them and uh, send them, so, again, uh, check out social medias, check out Dude Vinyl that uh, have some shirts decals on there you can buy that help support the channel as well so um thank you for watching again and i will see you guys next time